Now we're going to look at how we classify how different organisms acquire their nutrients and energy. So we've already learned some of these terms before in the last unit, um, but I don't think it hurts to re-examine them, and we're going to learn a little bit more about them. So autotroph, remember that troph is referring to where you feed, and auto means self. So autotroph literally translates into self-feeding, that these sort of things can feed themselves. Um, and so they make their own nutrients, their own organic molecules from um, inorganic molecules using basic energy sources. They're also known as producers because they can produce their own food. So autotroph is synonymous with producer. They use energy from light, which is photosynthesis, or, like I mentioned in the last set of notes, um, a small portion of organisms use inorganic chemicals. They're usually bacteria um, to get their energy from, and, and this is known as chemosynthesis instead of photosynthesis. Regardless of whether or not you're using photosynthesis or chemosynthesis, you're using energy in some form to make organic compounds, such as glucose, with chemical energy. Um, when you burn the, that glucose, those organic compounds, you'll release some of that energy as heat. The nutrients that autotrophs use, carbon dioxide is very important to them because they use that to make glucose. Um, water and minerals are also used to make organic compounds. Um, and examples include plants, algae, cyanobacteria, photosynthetic protists like euglena, um, and chemosynthetic bacteria. Now you got a little sketch of how this plant is taking in carbon dioxide, water, and minerals, and light, and using uh, that to make glucose. Heterotroph means to feed on others. So troph, again, where you feed. Hetero means other, other than. So a heterotroph is feeding on something um, or getting their food uh, from something other than themselves. So it's an organism that obtains energy and nutrients by eating other sources of organic carbon molecules, mainly plant or animal matter. There's a number of different types of heterotrophs, such as with consumers. You can divide them up into carnivores that just eat meat herbivores that just eat plants, and omnivores that can eat both meat and plants. And there's scavengers that tend to eat dead things um, after they've been killed, decomposers into tritivores. So a consumer is literally consuming the food that it's eating. It has a mouth, it has an anus, um, they obtain energy by feeding on other organisms that are still alive or recently dead. They use the chemical energy stored in organic molecules to fuel the life processes and release energy as heat. Again, they obtain nutrients by ingesting, by consuming other organisms. Um, examples include caterpillars, humans, bats, birds, moths, spiders, elephants, amoeba, mosquitoes. It's not just animals, there are protists that could be consumers as well. A detritivore is um, something that obtains energy by feeding on detritus. And detritus is dead organic material, such as dead leaves and other parts of plants, feathers, hair, other dead parts of animals, and feces from animals. Um, so you have like an earthworm that literally will eat earth matter, the organic matter in the earth, and soil is made up of a lot of different detritus, dead things that are decomposing, bacteria, feces. Um, other examples include dung beetles, sea cucumbers, crabs, wood lice. These so dead tritivores eat dead organic material. They're still releasing energy as heat. Saprotrophs obtain energy by secreting digestive enzymes onto detritus and then absorbing the products of digestion. So unlike the detritivore that actually ingests it with a mouth, saprotrophs digest their food externally and then absorb that 
whatever's left over um, through their cells. They still release energy as heat. They break down organic molecules and release inorganic elements such as nitrogen and phosphorus into the ecosystem um, so that they can be used again by other organisms. Many types of bacteria and fungi are saprotrophs, even some types of protists like the slime mold here are saprotrophs. Yes, this is just kind of a table that breaks down the different types of feeding methods. You're either a heterotroph or an autotroph. If you're an autotroph, aka a producer, you could be a photoautotroph that uses photosynthesis like plants and algae, or you could be a chemoautotroph that uses chemosynthesis like those chemosynthetic bacteria that live in the deep sea ocean vents or sunlight can't reach. Conversely, if you're a heterotroph and you get your energy from other organisms, you can either be a consumer, um, in which case you actually ingest the organic matter that's either been living or recently killed. And we'll get into what primary and secondary consumers are shortly. Or you can be a decomposer, which gets their energy from non-living organic matter. The big difference here is that with the consumer, if the organism's killed, it was recently killed. But as a decomposer, um, they're eating organisms that have been dead for a while. Detritivores ingest non-living organic matter. Um, ingest is the key word there. They actually consume it in a way. And then saprotrophs secrete digestive enzymes. They do external digestion and then absorb the product.